What's up, everybody? About two years ago, I rescued these five trees from a dumpster. And uh, I thought we'd take a look at how everything is coming in, some concerns, considerations, and the methods we used, and also a little bit of a discussion about how we make decisions about dividing plants and when is appropriate so that we keep the mother plant healthy but can continue everything propagating out for as little cost as possible. So real quick, this is a Prunus snozofam. Get this in focus for a second. In the spring that we picked this up, this tree did not bloom at all. It was incredibly sad. And now you can see tons of life coming in. It's much happier. We did a series of trials with compost in the pots while we worked to get rid of the invasive bush that was planted here before we got here by an owner several decades ago, I would assume. At least 10 years, because that's how long the species has been on this list for the state. Like many nursery trees, when we picked these up, these roots that you can see here weren't exposed at all. The tree was actually buried up to about here in the pot. There were stones. There were terrible, terrible little green beads of uh, some kind of moisture-retaining compound that I don't really approve of. You can actually see some of the leftover gravel that made its way into this pot here. And so any kind of brutal force or uh, chopping of the roots to break the girdling roots that had formed in the topmost areas of the soil around the tree trunk uh, would have been catastrophic for the tree and resulted in a failure. So what we did is we added a ton of compost, we repotted everything, uh, and then set them out pretty much in their final location and worked to remove the invasive bushes. Once we had removed the bushes, we removed the mulch, planted these trees a little above grade, and then backfilled everything with a layer of fresh soil and all of this recovered tree mulch that you see here, kindly, kindly donated by the town. Every year, we rebury this little section here in the compost and the mulch just to protect the roots from the winter temperatures that do get low. Uh, but every spring, we come in, we remove some, we water it deeply to kind of wash away what we can, and we just try to expose a little bit more of the root flare each year. As you can see, this helps us keep our trees healthy, helps us... Uh, reduce costs because it costs money to get those huge containers of dead plants hauled away. So when you show up to a greenhouse and go, hey, can I take a look at your dumpster real quick? We're looking to recycle pots or we're looking to do this. And you come across a tree and you're like, hey, what do you want for this one? There's a good chance they'll give it to you for free or for a really good price. So it never hurts to ask. We'll link here for uh, the Treehab videos that we have showing what we used for compost and the method we used. And we also have a little tree planting guide where I abuse the hell out of a root ball. So that's fun. Moving on to a few more things. We have this Japanese maple that still 
the full root flare has not been exposed, but you can see we've worked considerably down from where it was originally planted. And while not the most spectacular, we do have a few really nice sets of buds coming in. So we encourage the tree to perform to its full potential. It's gotten a little late to do some of the pruning that I would have otherwise liked to do, but we'll let this guy go, and then when he falls asleep again, we'll trim him up nice, get him back to full health again, and keep working on his root ball. Regarding the plants that we propagate and how we do it, many of them are similar to this, which is an anise hyssop. And it looks like some kind of hyacinth in there as well. Now, you can see that I've left some of the stems here, uh, bits of them, as mulch around the plant just to break down a little bit more carbon and woody debris to be pr extra protective and to hold some of the leaf litter down over the winter. Um, this plant, as you can see, uh, has not outgrown its original ring. If I were to pull back the mulch layer here, you'll see a few additional shoots coming in from the original plant, but this one has not overtaken its original pot size. So we're going to let this one grow for another season completely undisturbed. Uh, we will take some of the flowers from it for personal products and teas, but uh, we will not be splitting the root ball or the mound um, as this one has a habit of forming. Uh, it'll generally, each season after the first that it's in the ground, it'll kind of come out half again the diameter of the original planting, and then half again the next year. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Um, but you don't really want to harvest it or split it um, before it's had a chance to really overgrow its original space. You run the risk of depleting the root ball of its energy and putting this plant into a shock state that'll hamper the growth for the season. So always be careful. If we come over this way, though, I'll show you a plant that is probably going to be split at the end of this season. If I can spot it again. Oh, here we go. So, another plant in the mint family is the Monarda didyma. I believe this one is actually Monarda fistulosa. But this one was a very small cutting of the roots that we did a few years ago. Uh, I want to say last year. And you can see that the original spot was not very big. But if we come over here, we have overtaking new space and overtaking new space. Uh, each of these plants can actually be used in your garden to advantageously control the growth of mint. So if you accidentally got mint or you have me as a neighbor and you don't want my mint spreading to you, you can plant these things or say, hey, would you plant these things around your mint? And these occupy the same lateral space in the soil profile as the mint would spread through, and they act as a sort of rhizomal barrier. And you can actually special custom make border gardens for more advantageous plants just by matching what part of the soil they spread through and planting plants that run the similar profile. It's a neat trick. But anyway, on this guy, you can take these stems out now. Everything's coming in. But this plant at the end of the season will come in, remove a whole bunch of this mulch, and just kind of come in with a gentle pitchfork underneath and just kind of lift everything up. 
and that'll expose the mound and the root mass. And then we can soak it, cut it, and put these guys in new spaces so that we have more flowers for the bees and more flowers for our teas. And we can have a little bit more green in our space, which really is the goal. Now, if you leave something for too long, you run the risk of it being too comfortable in its space. We have some more of this Monarda here. And last year, I want to say it came to about here and hadn't quite made it to this stone wall here. But it is now all the way in the back corner, popping up in between the daffodils, up against the house, and actually coming in through some of the cracks in this stone wall now. And you can see it starting to pop up here and here. So it has definitely grown comfortable in this space. It's actually probably the predominant plant if I had to say. I've got a ton of it right here, which is just awesome. But if I come in real close, you can see all of the little root nods or nodules coming in from there. And this running clumper will just kind of, similarly to mint, kind of fall over. So if I wanted to propagate this, I could bring some of this mulch forward, but um, I'm looking to keep this easy to pull. I may actually take a few of these sprigs and pop them up uh, just to keep it looking crisp. As crisp as this can look. And uh, yeah, this will definitely get cut and transplanted out this season. But it's all the waiting game. It's all about whether or not you have the patience and the internal fortitude to hold off on splitting plants that you really adore. Because in the long run, it's a balancing act between more plants now or a plant that can make you many, 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 many more plants later. That's all I got for you right now, folks. Hope you liked it. Hope your plants are coming in and you're feeling all hopeful for spring. And may the pollinators always be blessing your yard. Much love. Catch you soon. Thanks for watching.